Hello and welcome back for another FilmFX tutorial. This time we have a great video for everyone using V-Ray as we'll show you how you can have a full V-Ray rendering support for FilmFX caches including GP rendering. Such a level of rendering support is only possible through V-Ray Voyager Grid. Even though FilmFX is fully integrated with Arnold Renderer, you still cannot render FilmFX on the GPU with Arnold unless using the Arnold Voyager Grid. Until now, Using volume grids with FilmFX requires that users have to manually change volume grid cache paths whenever it's changed within the FilmFX. To overcome this drawback, we have created a new shader named Arnold V-Ray volume grid that will do all this tedious work for you automatically. The scene that is currently rendering is the scene from the cinematic explosion tutorial and we'll make it to render with V-Ray. So first, I will go and change Renderer to V-Ray. Now I will go to FilmFX by pressing the Ctrl, Shift and F button at the same time. And this will open our UI. And now I have to go to the rendering parameters and change shader to Arnold V-Ray volume grid. And I'll hit this button to create the V-Ray volume grid. Now, since I'm using an old simulation that is a native FilmFX cache format, uh, I don't want to change this extension now to VDB, but I'll go later and convert FXD caches to VDB. The type of volume grid object that is created depends if the current render is Arnold or V-Ray. If we select the V-Ray volume grid, object, you can see that it has the path to the currently selected FumeFX path, which is default. FumeFX has automatically set up the custom mapping. Now, before we proceed, we will need to convert those FXD caches to VDB, and I'll use the post-processing mode. First, of course, I need to change the post-processing file type to VDB. And now I can press the Start Simulation button and start the cache conversion. Once the caching is done, we need to change input to the post-processing cache, which is going to load this post-processing cache into the V-Ray volume grid. Now we're going to set up some rendering of the fire and smoke going to hit the interactive renderer and I'm going to need one Arno, uh, one V-Ray light sorry targeted light I'm going to this light to illuminate smoke from the front side and for the rendering I'm going to load the rendering preset for the fire and smoke from FumeFX that will set some initial values and let's just disable this uh, fuel so that we can set up rendering of the smoke we're just going to use the RGB color that we have inside the VDB caches. So as you can see the smoke isn't all white, it has some gray, some brown color that's uh, added for the during the simulation. So now we can go back to the fire and I'm going to use temperature for the shading. Now inside the film effects this temperature goes from around 0 to 200 and I'm going to add some more keys and change the layout for those keys they are grouped we, we want to group them within this uh, green area which tells us the range of temperatures within the cache this is a little bit too red for me so 
I'm going to use a little bit yellow, reduce the saturation, and I can also add some smaller value. This one is going to be less saturated. So we're shading basically in this area. This is an important and we can increase this fire multiplier, let's say 10. That's okay. At the beginning the explosion is very hot and bright, so we're going to use this, which is just fine. But as you can see for later frames, temperature disappears and we're left with a uh, smoke in the scene so yeah that's this is just a quick overview how you can render a few effects with a v-ray and i hope that you like this video that you find it useful and it makes your life easier when using few effects with v-ray and also you will be able to render on the v-ray and arnold gpu so thank you for watching and see you soon with new FumeFX tutorials.